see, should I watch Moon Knight or uh, We Own This City? Hi. Yeah, We Own This City. <laughs> Y'all got my Jedi hoodie on again, so you know what that means. I didn't shave my goddamn head. Because, listen, I had to get on front of the camera and talk to y'all about this. So, I just got done watching the first episode, the series premiere of We Own the City. Now, I saw the trailer for this. I was excited because this comes from the creators of The Wire. It's based on a, a book of the same name, We Own the City. It's uh, about Baltimore. So, I'm like, we're back to Baltimore. Now, if you watch my channel, you know... That I'm always talking about The Wire. I'm, I'm always referencing The Wire, okay? The Wire is one of my favorite shows of all time. It's in my Mount Rushmore. So the fact that we're going back to Baltimore again just gave me all kind of... I, 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 I was in my fields, man. I was in my fields. But the thing about it is, even though it takes place in Baltimore, it's the same city, but it's a different universe. So I guess kind of almost like Uptown Saturday Night and Let's Do It Again, even though you have all the same uh, people, but they're playing different characters in different situations. Totally different universe, but same kind of, uh, you know what I mean? So yeah, here we are, back in Baltimore again. And I have to get this out the way first. Um, so many people from The Wires on this show. Let me see, we got Slim Charles, uh, Poot, who plays kind of a weird role. Poot almost looks out of place here, y'all. <laughs> okay, by the way, I'm going into spoilers here. But Poot looks like he's just, I don't know, he, okay, he's part of the nar narcotics unit, or the, the police force. But because he's like so small and uh, he just looks out of place. He, he almost kind of puts me in the mind of your boy from Fantasy Island. You know, the little, you know, the plane, boss, the plane. Because he's like second fiddle to like the, the head detective. I think his name is McDougal. He's like the like the, the, the main guy. And Poot is like his his deputy. His like his his little side. His Robin. You know what I'm saying? He's the guy that says, hey, you know, go put that, that GPS on it. You got it, boss. You know? <laughs> But anyway, yeah, Poot's on here. Um, who else did I see? Oh yeah, the uh, the chief, he's on here. Um, oh man, there, there's a couple other faces that I recognize from the wire. I, I know it's gonna come back to me. Oh yeah, of course, Marlo. How could I forget Jamie Hector, Marlo? Um, a few other faces on here, but of course I'm not remembering because I got the camera rolling and the pressure's on me to get this video out. But yeah, y'all. So the whole thing of this show, right? So. I was nervous because I'm coming off of so many crime dramas. All right? I just got done with Snowfall, which was an epic season. Just got done with Power Book 4. Um, got done with Raising Canaan, Godfather of Harlem. You know, I'm watching all these shows based off of drugs, you know, drug dealing. And I'm like, eh, I'm starting to get a little dope boyed out here. You know what I'm saying? And, but here it is. We have finally a, a cop drama that, yes, it does kind of go into, uh, you know, drugs and stuff. But that's not the focus. The focus is the Baltimore Police Department, okay? So the whole thing with this show is it focuses on the rise and fall of the Baltimore Police Department. Um, was it uh, Gun... Who? Gun Trace Task Force, GTTF, uh, led by John Bernthal. And from what I got out of it, I could be wrong. I'm sure people went more into detail about this. But what I got out of it is that he's the head of this. But at the same time, the whole point of this is, of course, to take the guns off the street. But he takes his job literally. He's actually, he comes across as a really good cop, really trying to do his job, and that's not what the city wants. This is all about politics. This is about numbers and stats. So right now, the crime is up big time because of the killing of an unarmed black man. Okay, from there, the city's just in the uproar. People are rioting. They're angry. Crime has gone up like crazy. But that's good for the city because they want all these arrests. Okay, we have to make all these arrests and... You know, because without crime, how do we get paid? You know, just like like with hospitals, okay, people stop getting sick. You know, hospitals would be out of business. Pharmaceuticals would be out of business. So we need crime to keep going. But at the same time, we're putting all these programs in place, all these task forces in place to give the illusion that we're trying to stop crime. But we're not. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Wayne Jenkins. That's his name. Sounds like a cowboy. Wayne Jenkins, the John Bernthal character, really is sincere about cleaning the streets up. And damn it. No, no. So, yeah, that, that was a powerful scene at the end where the FBI jacked him up and he's in the interrogation room and the chief walks in there or the commissioner and he just looks at him and shakes his head and like, damn, like everybody else would have turned a blind eye, but he's the only one that that wouldn't. Son of a bitch. Like, how come we couldn't just go with the program? 
And also, uh, another fascinating character in here, and I can't pronounce her real name, but I just remember her from the TVA on Loki. Uh, she was also in this uh, movie called uh, His House. Uh, black chick, what's her name? Um, anyway, she plays Nicole Steele, so she is an attorney that's assigned to the Civil Rights Department of the Justice Department, and she's seen all the corruption and stuff going on, and even witnesses um, cops detaining a person, a, a black male, but of course, you know, like, like a lot of videos, they just show the part where the guy's getting jacked up by the cops, but they don't show the ending of it or even how it began. So what people is not going to know is that the cops got up and said, you know what, fuck this, police yourselves. So this is just the first episode, but this seems like a very interesting show because it's going to show the uh, from what I think the good, the bad, and the ugly of the police. Okay, because you do see good cops. Okay, you do see... Uh, cops that take their job seriously, you see corrupt ass cops, okay, the one cop that got on my fucking nerves, and I want to punch him right in the fucking face, what is his name, uh, uh yeah, he, he's, he's, uh, he's one of those cops that likes just to fuck with niggas for no reason, all right, he, he, okay, he's the guy that pulls over Slim Charles, right, from the wire, he pulls him over, and, because I guess he did, what's that called, where you go, come to a stop sign, but you just turn without stopping, what's it called, like a stop and roll or something like that, I, I did that before myself, Pulls him over for that, and he's like, dude, I made a full stop. You know, what you want me to do, to sit there all day? Oh, you being a smart ass, huh? Oh, you think you tough, huh? Okay. <laughs> gets him out of the car, grabs his wallet, throws his credit cards on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Gets his license. Oh, oh, oh you from this uh, area, huh? That's a good area. You have a nice day. Asshole. And I know his name is going to come back to me, but he's an asshole. I, I can't stand that guy. I want something to happen to him before the season is out. So y'all, not to ramble on. This first episode was a very promising start. It is a very promising start to what I think is going to be a dope-ass series. Okay, and though I had to get all my Wire stuff out the way because I know that this is not going to be The Wire. But of course, I'm seeing all the people from the show, so I can't help but think about it. But I know this is going to be a totally different animal, and I'm on board. I don't really fuck with the police, but at the same time, I don't hate them because I know that we need police. Okay, we, if we don't have police, it's anarchy. But I just wish there was a way to just dismantle just get rid of the bad ones you know the ones that you know uh cause a division between police and community you know what i'm saying i know there's there's really good sincere cops out there hell my, my son goes to elementary school and there's a cop that works out there very nice guy man you know you can tell he cares about the community but you got those bad apples like that cop i just talked about that fuck it up for the rest of them and those are motherfuckers we need to go up the street so anyways y'all this was a dope-ass show. I'm, I'm happy because I got something else to talk about. Because when Snowfall ended, I said, damn, what the fuck am I going to talk about now? Because I ain't fucking with Moon Knight. I'm telling you that right now. I, I tried watching Moon Knight, and I cannot get into this shit. Matter of fact, I think a new episode dropped today. And I'm like, hmm, see, should I watch Moon Knight or uh, We Own This City? Hi. <laughs> yeah, We Own This City. <laughs> Fuck Moon Knight, man. I heard people are saying, hey, we got, we well, Rashad, you just have to understand it. And I, listen, I, I guess my brain is not that that advanced because Moon Knight fucking lost me after the first episode. I kept falling asleep. I did not fall asleep on this show not one time. That's the litmus test for me. If you can hold my interest and keep me up where I don't look at my phone, where I don't uh, doze off, that's how you know you got me. So we own the city. First episode, fucking fire. John Bernthal does his thing. Every the whole cast it just does a thing, and um, I'm excited to see where the show goes. So, what did y'all think about the first episode? Comment freely below. Let me know what you thought. If you like it, dig this content. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.